Hey everybody, this is going to be a short video just to show you how to align two meshes that you want to perform um, a mesh comparison on. And so this is going to be really quick and I have another video that shows you how to do the mesh comparison in MeshLab. And so in that case I had two models derived from a CT scan. Um, so they were they were already in alignment with each other. But sometimes you might want to compare like a surface scan with a CT scan of the same model or um, if you have two different surface scans then they're not necessarily going to be in the same location and so how do we um, how do we get them aligned so that you can perform a uh, comparison on them. So this here is just a scan, um, a surface scan of some deer teeth and the first one here I have is uh, is the higher resolution and I'll turn you can see down here at the bottom in the information tab that it has 970,000 vertices and the second one here that I've colorized yellow just so you can see the difference um, is a much lower resolution version of this uh, of this model so it's uh, 223 vertices and I've these were in alignment but I intentionally put them out of alignment so that uh, I can demonstrate this tool. So the first thing we need to do um, is, you know, you can play around with the colors if you want using, uh, you know, click on the model and change uh, the color here if you want. Again, that's just changing the color in the viewer, but I've already done this with one and the default gray is fine for the other. Um, so I'm just going to click this big A up here on the toolbar. That is the align tool. And what happens is another box pops up and we can make it a little bigger here. So the very first mesh that I imported is the high resolution mesh. And so uh, in this case, I want that mesh to stay in place. So I'm gonna say glue here mesh. And I want to move the lower resolution mesh to be aligned with the high resolution mesh. And you know, depending on your situation and what your uh, in intended applications, it may or may not matter which one moves towards the other because you may be moving them again later, you know, to set to a specific coordinate system. So just pick one, whatever makes sense for your situation. For the second mesh, make sure you click on it. And we're gonna select point-based gluing. And another window pops up. And you can see here, it says choose at least four matching pair of points on the two meshes. Double click over each mesh to add new points, choose points in consistent order. So what you need to do here is first, you can move each one of these and try to put them in roughly the same position. So you can identify at least four points over, spread over the whole model. Like you don't wanna do a straight line you want to sort of capture uh, different areas of the model to align. Um, if we look down here at the bottom, you've got a couple of options here. You can use false color or not. And, you know, the false color is nice because it makes them two different colors. You can say use point rendering or not. That might be helpful if your models are really big. And whether or not to allow scaling. And these should be, in my case, they should be the same size, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. If you're using photogrammetry or something, you might produce models that are not the same size. Um, so you might want to, to set that. So I'm gonna just identify, try to identify four points here. And um, it doesn't matter which one you click first, which model, as long as you put them consistently, um, place the points consistently. So I'm gonna, I'm going to start with the left model or the blue model. I'm going to double click and you see that first point is labeled zero. When we click the equivalent point on the second model, that's also labeled zero. Okay. Um, again, so left mouse, let's see, um, maybe I'll find a second point on this same side before rotating it. And it doesn't have to be super perfect. I mean, you can zoom in and stuff, but you know, you have a little fudge room. If you have models with color or texture, um, then you know you might want to turn off the false color and use the texture or the color to help you a little bit, but you don't have to. I like not using the color, 
<clears throat> and just looking for the shapes, you know, because there might be like holes or little cracks that kind of help you find um, matching spots. Let's see, I want to pick something along the bottom here too. <clears throat> and we'll go here. And the minimum is four, so I already have the minimum, but you know, it doesn't hurt to, to do more if you feel like you haven't, if your points are not very spread out and you wanna kinda just make sure they're a little bit more spread out. Um, yeah, maybe I'll pick one on the top. We're probably fine, but I'll pick one up here. And when you like what you've picked, then you just click OK. And you can see that already the second mesh has been moved, roughly moved to align with the first, but we still, in order to refine that, we need to click process. So we can do that. And this has all of the default uh, ICP settings. I've never really had a need to, to change the settings, but you can take a look and change them if you need to. You can see how the meshes overlap here. And you can copy and paste this um, alignment data here if you want. And then I'm just gonna close it. So back here in the main window, one thing you'll notice is all this information down here at the bottom. And um, So this is refreshed now down <laughs> the first mesh that we uh, didn't move that we kind of just glued in place is showing um, the transformation is sh not showing any changes. It's just an identity matrix. Nothing was done to it. The second mesh, however, has a bunch of numbers here. So there's um, the first thing we want to do before we sort of close out or before we export this mesh is to freeze that matrix. Um, but another thing that you can do is we can go ahead and save this project. So we can say file save project as, and I've got it uh, under desktop here. And I'm just going to call the, this alignment. Okay. And then we want to right click on the mesh that had changes made to it, and we want to say freeze current matrix. And you see now the transformation, transformation matrix is gone. And then we can now save this, and we'll call it, um, you know, I'm going to shorten this and just call it aligned. And now very quickly, um, I closed out of MeshLab, but you can see this MeshLab project file that's here. And we can actually open this up. I'll just open it with Notepad and show you. The first mesh that didn't move, this is its matrix here, which is an identity matrix. For the second model, you can see um, the transformation matrix here. So you have that. By saving the project, you now have what transformation was applied to the second model in order to get it aligned with the first. And then I'm going to open a new MeshLab project and I'm going to show you a couple things. One, I'm going to drop in this alignment project. So let's make this a little smaller so you can see what it looks like. And it has the two models and it's showing that transformation matrix. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to show is the, oops. I'm going to show you the, the original mesh and the aligned mesh. I'm just going to drop it in here so you can see how they look. They are aligned. Let me change the color of one of them so that that's a little clearer. There you go. Now you can see that they are overlapped. So this is the one after I um, 
did freeze current matrix and then exported it. So now you have it aligned for, you know, whatever else you're going to do with it. If you want to do the mesh comparison, I'll um, drop the link in the description so that you can move on to that video and um, perform your mesh comparison.